Okay. It was claimed to be true that the Affordable Care Act has a positive effect on health care costs for people in America. This claim was supported by three secondary claims that one, the Affordable Care Act makes health insurance affordable by providing subsidies, two, that it emphasizes preventative care, and three, that it improves how health care itself is delivered. I'm going to show that these secondary claims are flawed and how they have a negative effect on the representation of the main claim. I will challenge the first claim with a counterclaim, the second with an evidence challenge, and the third with a reasoning challenge. Claim one, that the Affordable Care Act makes health care affordable via subsidies, was supported by a statement that users cannot receive it if they are already getting any sort of other government assistance. Since this statement is a restriction, it limits the ability for the Affordable Care Act to help individuals. It limits access to health care via the government system and forces potential recipients to look for health care elsewhere. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 11.4 million people in America are on Obamacare and 52.2 million other people are receiving some sort of other government assistance. The Affordable Care Act cannot provide health care to everyone, especially citizens that are on other forms of government assistance, the ones that don't qualify, and 85% of all Americans that are above the poverty line also do not qualify. This demonstrates a limiting factor in the Affordable Care Act's access and how little the Affordable Care Act will draw costs for the general public. Claim two that the Affordable Care Act emphasizes preventive care was supported by a statement that 75% of healthcare costs are spent on treatment and 3% of costs are spent on preventative care. If preventative care increases, costs for preventative care will also increase. And if the cost for preventative care increases, costs in general um, caused by the Affordable Care Act will increase for the individual. The Affordable Care Act does not decrease costs for health care. Also, the, according to KFF.org, users have to qualify for preventative treatment for depression, um, STIs, AIDS, HIV, and other uh, screenings. You must have an A or B rating with the U.S. Prevention uh, Service Task Force, or the USPSTF. Therefore, preventative care costs increase, but only for those that qualify, which is less than 11.4 million Americans in general. Claim three that the Affordable Care Act improves how health care is administered primarily does not support the main claim about cost. It was said that the Affordable Care Act increases time with doctors, and there are three problems with this statement that need to be addressed. One, the supporting claim does not support the main claim about cost. Two, other healthcare providers offer similar services like Kaiser and uh, state provided healthcare, implying that the Affordable Care Act is no different from regular healthcare and alternatives. And three, that the statement had no evidence to reference in the speech. Doctors that offer assistance in the affordable healthcare system are paid according to performance. And according to Fortune.com, this, however, does not decrease total doctor income and indirectly decreases costs. It does not indirectly decrease costs. The demand for doctors increases as Affordable Care Act uh, recipients increase. The supply of doctors goes down, and therefore economics will verify that the cost of each visit will increase. I showed that the argument that the Affordable Care Act decreases healthcare costs is flawed by demonstrating three errors in reasoning and structure that hurt the credibility of the arguer. I explained that the Affordable Care Act is actually more limiting than accepting, that emphasis on preventative care actually increases health care costs, and that increased time with doctors decreases supply and indirectly increases costs for the individual. Thank you.
Okay, similar to a uh, speech we heard earlier, I thought that the summary made the arguments clearer than what you were doing in the body of the speech. Uh, looking at those uh, points now, I think uh, there a couple of them are clearer as a consequence, and so the summary accomplishes really what the speech needs to accomplish. The first point is the issue of affordability. And in essence, you are saying that people who are receiving some other kind of assistance are not able to get access or the subsidies uh, to the Affordable Care Act. So you mentioned, for example, there are 52 million people who are receiving some other form of assistance. So by necessity, those 52 million people are excluded from any subsidy. That appears to be the argument. What you need to then show is that those folks have health care costs that are higher or that people who aren't getting assistance uh, but don't fall within the poverty line that gets you the assistance uh, can't have access. There should be some information about how the health care costs have been affected uh, subsequent to the passage of the Affordable Care Act. And we don't really get that. We get this, you know, which I think is a good premise, you know, that it, your access to the subsidies is restricted if you're getting other kinds of access or if you're over a particular um, income level. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that in the long run that that matters that much to people who are advocates of the Affordable Care Act. They'd say, those are the people that need it the most. Everybody else will figure it out. Uh, it's the people who are poor that needed the help the most, uh, the help with their uh, health care the most. On the preventative care argument, I did not understand your reasoning on this particular point. If we suddenly change and pay for more preventative care, that's suddenly going to increase the costs. Uh, there's not an explanation about why that is true and why those costs would then you know, have some negative effect on uh, people being able to get access to uh, preventative care. You mentioned uh, that some people you know, fit into a qualifying category for assistance, an A or a B category. That's not a very well explained situation or circumstance there, so I'm not quite sure uh, what who these people are and why they are screened in this particular category. And the preventative care that you're talking about is, you know, it sounded like most of it was all um, sexually transmitted uh, illnesses uh, as opposed to a variety of other kinds of things. Um, I think there's good. I think there's a stronger argument for you to make here about the effectiveness of preventative health care, or the likelihood that preventative health care would be effective in the long run. And uh, what you went for is kind of a counter causality argument, suggesting this other consequence is going to happen. And I don't think you've got a good information to support that point. So that feels a little bit like a stretch there. And then the. Um, issue about the supply of doctors. Uh, you've got a theory that kind of explains this. Again, I think there needs to be a little bit more information on it. And as I said at the, uh, at the, at the outset, I think that your summary did a better job of explaining what the argument was as uh, you were kind of tying things together, which at least is exactly the way you want to finish with these arguments. You want to finish uh, making the strong point that you're trying to make. All right. Thank you.